Hi there, welcome to Understanding VIX Trading. Just a reminder that, uh, you know, this is for educational purposes. None of this should be considered trading advice. Uh, options have risk. Consult your professional, your financial professional. This is me. My name is Mark Sebastian. I am founder of OptionPit.com and the CIO of Carbon Line Capital, uh, a hedge fund. Uh, Option Pit is an education consulting firm. Uh, we work with institutions helping them implement option strategies and we work with individuals trying to teach them how to trade like a professional. Uh, we use the same methods that I was taught how to trade when I was becoming a floor trader. Um, so I like to joke we've got clients with $1,500 and clients with $15 billion. Um, and the guy with 1500 usually knows more about options than the guy with 15 billion. Today we're going to talk about what is volatility, what is VIX, and ways to trade the VIX. Volatility is a measurement of movement All right. um, of an underlying instrument over a period of time regardless of direction. The higher the volatility, the higher the movement and or expected movement of the underlying. When we discuss volatility, no matter how long to expiration, the number is an annualized number. Right? So if I'm looking at volatility in Apple options that expire next week and that, that volatility is 50, guess what? That's 50 on an annualized basis. That doesn't mean for it's going to move 50% this week. There are three main types of volatility. Uh, there's historical volatility. That's how much an underlying has moved in the past. So that's, you know, historically the S&P has done this. Historically, Apple has moved this much. Historically, so-and-so has moved this much, uh, you know, and, it, you know, the last 20 days it has moved this. The last 30 days it has moved this, All right? Then the next one is realized volatility, and that's, that's how much something is moving right now. All right, so think of it as, you know, the very recent past. Still a historical volatility in the end, but it's the very recent past. So how much are things moving now? Then there is implied volatility. And that's how much the market is expecting an underlying to move over a set future time period. All right? Implied volatility is important. That is what the market thinks something is going to move. So what makes trading volatility, which I do, different than trading a stock? Over the long term, we know where implied volatility of a stock or index is going to go. We do not know where the stock price is going to go. Implied volatility is mean reverting. Here is a chart of Apple. Notice it goes up and up and up. All right. Here is a chart of VXAPL, which is the volatility of Apple. And, you know, and, ooh, what I want you to notice is how that 200-day moving average really doesn't move very much. You know, it's going from kind of high to kind of low, and it's meandering right around kind of that 26, 27, 28 level, kind of right there. All right, even the 50 doesn't move around very much. <clears throat> and VXAPL has highs and lows that it touches, but it doesn't stay there. It kind of goes back. Mean reversion. All right. So that's the thing to remember is a stock price can go anywhere and stay there. And while the volatility can go anywhere, it can't stay there. It will revert back. And understanding that can help you with your buying and selling. All right. Most traders think mean reversion is an instantaneous thing. All right, it is not. All right, volatility can stay low for long periods of time. See 2012 through 20, the first half of 2014. And then vols can get high and stay high. I mean, look at basically August 2015 up to now. There's been some periods of low volatility, but we've had some consistently higher volatility. It is important not to have a recency bias. Understand how high and low 
volatility can get and how long it can stay there. When the IVs are low, they can stay there for a very long time. Money can seem easy. You know, that's the easy time to sell premium. It's when premium sellers can think they're, think they're a genius because they're making money. Not always true. But money can go away incredibly fast. The play is to be long vol and long units and short premium. So how are you long vol? Well, you can buy back month options. What are you, long units? That's cheapy options. And be short premium. So during periods of low volatility, I really like calendar spreads. They seem to work. Now, high volatility, you know, until recently, really the last year, all right, spikes since 2008 had been relatively short. We had one kind of real spike in uh, 2010, or uh, excuse me, 20, 20, uh, 2011, but outside of that, all of the little vol spikes have been kind of, bi you know, little binary events that then went away. But be aware, IV can stay high for months and then take months to ease back. There can be trades like long VXX and short time spreads that can be the right trade. Very rarely is VXX a good thing to buy, but it can be. Um, short butterflies can work, all right, and things that are short wings, on a ratio, uh, not on a ratio, can be profitable. Think debit spreads. Now let's talk about VIX. All right. The, the VIX is the SIBO volatility index. The purpose of the index is to gauge the buying and selling of options in the S&P 500. It gauges the cost of insurance. How much does it cost to insure your portfolio? That is what the VIX is measuring. And the idea is that when VIX is going up, there's more buying of options than selling. And when it's dropping, there's more people selling options. VIX is up, cost of insurance is higher, and vice versa. So, for instance, what did VIX do today? It was a lot higher. Why? People are worried about the election. All right, so if you don't want to dump your portfolio and you're worried about the election, what do you do? You hedge with options. So VIX goes higher. All right. I don't like the term fear gauge. I think it's stupid. But uh, if you look at it as kind of the insurance gauge, right? You insure something because you think something is, is not going to happen. But you're protecting against it. You know, we insure our vehicle not because we think we're going to get an accident, but we're afraid it, we might. Well, you buy portfolio insurance not because you think we're going to get an accident, but you're worried. Similar to the S&P 500, this index is not actually traded. You can't buy one share of the SPX. You can buy spiders, you can buy an S&P future, but you can't just go out and sit, call your broker and say, hey, buy me the S&P 500. They'll say, what do you want to do? Buy SPY or buy an index fund? All right. What's crazier is that unlike the S&P 500, there's no way to actually recreate VIX. Right. There is literally no way to recreate VIX. The VIX is essentially an estimate of implied volatility on the S&P 500 options that has a net duration of 30 days. All right. It has a constant duration of 30 days. That means it is constantly mimicking a, a portfolio with 30 days to expire. The weighting of the VIX puts more emphasis on at-the-money options, those trading near the underlying price. The weighting of VIX naturally puts more emphasis on out-of-the-money puts than calls. All right. And the VIX uses two weekly options closest to 30 days to expiration. One is equal to or less than 30 days. The other is more than 30 days. So, for instance, in October, this would have been the... Um, the two weeklies, the 30-day to expiration of the 37-day. <clears throat> All 
The VIX is quoted as a price, but is really a percent. Volatility, despite not being spoken as a percentage, is always a percentage. So a VIX of 30 is actually 30% 30 annualized volatility. 30% annualized expected movement over the next 30 days. You know, we annualize numbers all the time. Here's kind of a look of VIX and S&P. 2014, I like this because you can see the mirroring. The red is VIX, the blue is the S&P. And what do you notice? They trade opposite of each other. The VIX negatively correlates with the SPX. When the SPX is up, VIX is generally down. When SPX is down, VIX is generally up. This makes sense as generally, when the market sells off, volatility does increase. Think of the nature of similar movement against a lower number. So if the S&P is moving 20 points a day, and it's trading 2,000, it's moving 1% a day. If the S&P is moving 20 points a day and it's trading 1,000, well, guess what? It's trading 2% a day. All right. In addition, there are some, future, some features of VIX that cause it to increase in a sell-off. There really are. So the construction of something called skew naturally causes it to fall, uh, to rally when the market falls. Why? Well, remember, we talked about it. It puts more emphasis on at-the-money options. So if I am the S&P and I'm trading right here, all right, I'm trading right here on this vol. This is my at the money. Well, what if the S&P drops 20 points and we're now here? Well, even though the volatility curve didn't move, because my at the money options now have a much higher volatility, VIX is going to read higher. Characteristics. VIX options and futures are European exercise, which means there's no early exercise. They have a unique settlement procedure, um, and, and it's really unique. Um, they're based on VIXMO. The, the settle is based on VIXMO. It's called VRO, not VIX itself. And at 30 days to expiration, typically a move of the VIX future We'll have a beta of about 50 cents for every point of VIX. As time passes, VIX futures beta increases. They're the most successful product introduced in the last 20 years. They trade out eight months. Each month trades independently. It has weekly futures that are lightly traded. It is in contango. 80% of the time. Contango means that the front month future is less expensive than the next month out. And VIX futures are actively traded for by day traders, but they also are primarily used as a hedge or a hedging vehicle. The VIX options are the most successful option product introduced in the last 20 years. They also trade out eight months. Each month trades independently, not like the structure of SPX, which is based solely on carrying cost. All right. They have, um, they have weekly options that are traded very actively. The weekly options are far more active than the VIX, VIX futures weekly. And the underlying is the future, not the cash. All right. It is typically a hedge against a long portfolio. Volume of options. VIX options are extremely liquid and trade very actively. They trade over hybrid and open outcry. Markets are generally super tight. I mean, typically a nickel wide. A dime if they're in the money. And spreads trade in pennies. So 
Spreads trade in pennies. And what I want you to notice is look how many more calls trade generally than puts. All right. And you can see some of these huge orders that go up. I mean, this is one trade, and it's 75,000 contracts. All right, so now, recall that VIX options, the at-the-money strike is not the cash VIX level, but the futures. All right, VIX options are based on the futures. So... Um, on a specific date, the VIX futures at the money was 15.5 for November, 16.35 for December, and 17.70 for January. Let's see what it looks like today. Well, you can see... You've got the cash fix at 22. You've got the November future at 19 and a half, and the Dees future at 1890. There's a weird kink here, and then the January option at 19. Uh, the January future is 1970. Needless to say, this is in a slight contango. I really or a backwardation. I really only consider it backwardation if you see the, the first two months over the third month. And preferably, I see the third month over the fourth. And here is VIX, which is the VIX of VIX options. So it is volatility of volatility. And what do you notice? That is mean reverty as they come. Right now, VVIX is well near 120 again. All right, I believe where did VVIX close? They've got they've got the number down here. VVIX closed. Yeah, over 120. So now, how do you trade long VIX? When using options to trade a higher VIX, typically the most favorable trade is one that is slightly out of the money or at the money. If you want to own a call, you want at the money or slightly out of the money. Buying a call that is at the money and selling an out of the money for call can have be very favorable, all right? Bullish trades, bullish call spreads in VIX are the cheapest way to hedge using VIX and the cheapest way to play VIX going higher. All right, the other one I like is VIX, the biggest hedge trade is called a back spread. Now you only do this when VIX is low VIX back spreads are the most popular way traders hedge. Generally what they do, and here's the, uh, here's the setup, you set the trade up about five or six points outside away from each other. And typically, the big one we see is like the 2025. All right, they're done at 60 days to expiration. So you do, you'd sell one 20 call and buy two 25 calls in that trade. It's done about 60 days to expiration, and you exit this hedge after non-farm payrolls the month of, of expiration. So if I had a VIX trade on, all right, I would be long. So if I wanted to put on this trade two weeks ago when VIX was 12, I would have uh, sold the December 20 call 
bought two of the December 25 calls. All right, and then I would be looking to take that trade off after December non-farm payrolls. Great when VVIX is low. It's kind of what how you might set one up. This one costs a nickel. And that's what the, the hedge looks like on a risk chart. Now, trading short, the further out of the money put, the put is, the lower the volatility. Owning a long put will have favorable characteristics in a falling and stable environment. Long puts that are in the money relative to cash, but out of the money relative to futures, have a really good expected value. So in this scenario, obviously things change, but in this scenario, what I want you to notice is VIX is 14.5. And my VIX future is 15.55. And I, so I can buy an option that is 45 cents in the money for 95 cents. That's not bad. That has edge to it, in my opinion. This trade lost, but it did have edge. Now let's talk about the ETNs. As trading in the VIX futures has become more and more active, um, they've developed these ETNs. However, due to the term structure of VIX futures, many of these have some unintended consequences. And I call it the Sisyphus effect. As many of you know, King Sisyphus was made, thought he was smarter than Zeus, and then was made to roll a boulder up the hill that would then roll down just as he got to the top. All right? Thus, it came to be known that pointless or intermediable tasks, activities, are sometimes described as Sisyphean. Which brings us to VXX. VXX, or the IPATH S&P 500 short-term uh, futures ETN, attempts to replicate being long VIX futures with a constant duration of 30 days. The, intended, uh, the intention of the fund is to allow traders to get long or short near-dated forward volatility. The fund does this by constantly rolling out of front month futures and into second month futures. Would you run a business that bought a product for sixteen ten and sold it at fifteen and a half? That's basically how it works. They buy the future for sixteen ten, then every day they're selling it down, 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 and then buying the future back here. Buying the July feature. So I buy here, then I sell, 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 but and I'm buying up here. So I'm buying more expensive and then selling it at a losing price. And that's what it looks like. It's ugly. So VXX is slowly rolling itself towards zero, although it's been nice recently. Uh, VXX should not be held for more than a few hours if futures are in contango. VXX is a good volatility day trading product, can be used as a hedge against falling volatility, and is a poor hedge against rising volatility until futures enter backwardation. Different products, similar result, all right? VXZ is optionable. It is, wor it is not as bad as VXX, but still bad. UVXY is the double VXX, and it's levered. That thing is a stink bomb. It is optionable. Then there's TVIX, which is also levered. And then XVZ, which is the closest to a decent hedging product, but still not, not that great. All right, then there's the inverse CTNs. All right, and the inverse try to do kind of the opposite. If VXX is rolling itself towards zero, well then what about the opposite? Well, the problem is they're daily tracking, so they have tracking error. You've got XIV, ZIV, and SVXY. XIV is the opposite of VXX, ZIV is the opposite of VXZ, and SVXY is similar to XIV, but it has options. And what I want you to notice is that really, all of these products have lost money since 
June of 2014. Really since that first half of June, that falling volatility stopped. The short term, the short ETNs have failed and the long ETNs have failed. So in summary, VIX options have unique characteristics. Each has their own underlying. IV and VIX are correlated and bear and bull plays have different strengths.